Frameworks, day 17. Jesus has many titles. So we've expanded on yesterday's study, thinking about Jesus being the central character of the Bible. That means that we will discover many things about him by the names given to him. There isn't actually just one name that encapsulates everything there is about him. In fact, in Revelation 19, the New Testament, uh, worth looking up if you have some time, Jesus appears, uh, the rider on the white horse, with a name known only to himself. And then later in that same chapter, he is given at least two other names, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And his name is the Word of God. So this idea of uh, the Lord God, Jesus Christ, having many different titles that each reveal something of his character uh, and adorn his beauty and glory and help us appreciate and get excited about who he is. That is an idea running right through the Bible. And these particular names noted here, these titles, these things that describe what he's going to do and who he is and how he is and how we can know him, uh, they are designed to really open us up uh, they're, they're like highlights to help us appreciate the treasures that are in the scriptures for us as we come to them, longing to hear and know of Jesus. Uh, do go through each of them. Do follow that uh, counsel to look at the context of the individual verse that mentions the title. I just thought we could zoom in on one verse in Haggai. Uh, Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. This comes at a very bleak time in the life of the Lord's people. They are back in the land after a long period away. Not dissimilar from, although in a bigger scale, to us wanting to come back into church after lockdown, which we've now, we're looking forward to doing again, and we've already done once. And the atmosphere is of saying that this is not the time to rebuild the project of reaching the nations for Jesus. This is not the time to be a beacon on a hill and to be the light and hope of the world because everything is too hard right now and we can understand their sentiment. But into this, the Lord Jesus sends his servant Haggai and says, look, big things are going to come from you. This is still the hope of the world. And the reason is because I am. So you have 2 verse 7. This is what the, well, let's go for 2 verse 6. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. And we discover it is the Lord Jesus speaking as he speaks about how his coming as a man he will be the one that all the nations desire, not just Israel. As the angel of the Lord is the pre-incarnate Christ, Israel know about him, but most other nations don't. But when he comes at that time and fills the temple of his body with his glory, as he spoke about in John's gospel, then all kinds of people from all over the world will realise, yes, you are the one I want. You are the one I've always needed. It happened in small ways in the Old Testament. But this is speaking about how Jesus will be the one that all nations, with all their cultures, all their difference, all the things that they are longing for. Just reading about Armenia at the moment uh, in terrible war and oppression uh, from Azerbaijan. That country has desired Jesus for millennia, really. It is one of the most Christianized countries there's ever been. And it's so far from Western Christianity or from any of that. And yet there is a country or, or China, the millions of Christians that are in China now, and they are thoroughly Chinese and yet thoroughly Christian. They understand that actually to be truly Chinese is to be a Christian and to have Jesus. It just tells us so much about this God to have this one title. And in the same verse, we have, um, uh, I'm going to try and say a bit of Hebrew, Adonai Sabaot, uh, or Yahweh Sabaot, and it speaks about the hosts of heaven, uh, the Lord Almighty in that sense, the Lord of hosts, as the older translations have it, is always referring to that heavenly host, 
the billions and billions of angels that we see popping up at crucial moments like Elisha with his servant in Two Kings or the shepherds on the hillside. They're there all the time. And Jesus is the Lord and commander of all of them. If we ever doubt that he can do what he says, we only have to remember that he is the commander of heaven's armies, that he has infinite resources at his disposal. As he says in the Gospels, he has a legion of angels he can call on at any moment to do anything. But of course, he doesn't do it in Gethsemane. He doesn't do it just as he's about to die. But he does do it, Hebrews says, for the church. Angels are ministering spirits to uh, help those who will inherit salvation. And we get all this really fully sketched out, although some references in the New Testament, we get most of the detail of these titles in the Old Testament. I hope this excites you for what we can discover about Jesus as we read the whole Bible.